times, like, I, I really wanted to do an audio on the game, but I think it was, um, I think it came out, like, right before the 1.21 patch. Um, but basically, the gist of it was, uh, against Insomnia's Mountain King first strategy, what this guy did was um, he went for necromancers and like he started pushing with them like early in tier two without having like the tier three upgrade or anything snazzy like that um, and then just kind of seamlessly transitioned all the way up to tier three where he added some wagons um, we well, added wagons before the tier three and he also got cripple and he used that to get uh, to score hero kills on the mountain king late in the game and keep him from like just bolt dancing stuff um, and and a lot of the reason that was effective is that if your opponent didn't go for the Archmage, he doesn't have Brilliance Aura, that means it's going to take him considerably longer to recharge mana for dispelling. So so going for, if he's going to go for like Priest or something like that, he ends up actually having to get quite a few of them. Um, a note about microing Breath of Fire. Um, you can actually kind of click on the ground, like in front of the buildings you want to hit. It's kind of weird. It's kind of got a weird hitbox. Like it, it will hit. Breath of Fire will hit like forward. Like it, you see the little cone of fire on the screen, but if you watch like the towers and stuff, they'll take damage um, quite a ways beyond that cone of fire. So um, just kind of be aware of that, uh, and and so that if you're having problems with like night um, and you're trying to like target a building and the panda won't actually walk up to it for some reason because the pathing is bad, uh, you can just target the ground in front of them and you will still um, hit the buildings. Just make sure the panda's pointed the right way because if he blows it, if he blows the breath of fire the wrong way, he won't hit stuff. I mean, it's not like fan of knives where it just hits everything in a radius around him. Um, I believe Breath of Fire has a damage limit. I think it can hit... I think it's either got a damage cap or something where it can only hit like five or eight units or something like that. Um, so I would also like to mention that... Um, if you notice, I, th I believe uh, Fav trained um, the, the passive as opposed to getting um, Breath of Fire. The deal is, is that uh, against you know the same number of units, I don't think um, I don't think dr or excuse me, he didn't train the uh, the uh, drink ability. What is it called? Drunken haze. Um, uh, basically, the gist of that is because when when you're just looking to wipe out groups of like five footmen or so, or or uh, or peasants or things like that with the panda. Um, Ultimately, basically, uh, you get the same amount of damage for the same mana with Haze Fire as compared to just regular, you know, repeated Breath of Fires. It's Each one is, I believe, 75 mana. Um, the whole point of Haze Fire is it lets you turn more mana into more damage more quickly. Um, and you don't really need that against this. You really more just need to, like, be able to keep firing your opponent's stuff. Um, so Haze is kind of a worst worst a wasted skill point. Oh, the other thing that's cool about Haze is that the the uh, the burn effect from it doesn't actually have a damage cap, so you can basically put that effect on as many units as possible. That's why when you're using gargoyles, it's so important to um, dispel basically by using stone form or devourers or destroyers or something. Uh, it's so important to dispel the uh, the haze burn effect from haze fire because um, you're basically taking uncapped damage on like all your units, and that can end up being uh, really nasty for you. But um, in a situation like this, you're really more looking to f nail with fire like small groups of units, like like a clump of, especially a clump of peasants. That's that's really the best thing that you can target with your fires. Um, and so it's really best to just train plain old fire. That's kind of a roundabout explanation. I'm sorry for not being very direct, but being an undead player, I'm not much of a panda expert. Um, anyway, I just. I know that wasn't the best game in the world, I just kind of wanted to expose you guys to that strategy because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so, you know, give it a try yourself. Remember, ultimate point of it is 
get a whole lot of ghouls, um, at, but but play kind of carefully with him. The whole point is you want to just keep dealing a whole bunch of damage to his army, um, and and prevent him from expanding. You know, using using that fact that you have a fairly large fighting force, and you just fast creep the Panzer to level three, and just kind of um, spam uh, breath of fire on any peasants that he tries to build up. Um, a static base with a static expansion. Okay, uh, so I'm actually doing one more game. Um, this is definitely my longest audio ever, but as with this one, I will separate it into a different file. So I'm going to say goodbye to you now, but not for good, because there's one more left. See you What's up, everybody? This is Frey in the last segment of my last audio commentary. If you've gotten to this point, you must really, really love me. And I appreciate your love. So, um, let's get this game going. It's going to be paused at the two-minute mark um, from my point of view. And I'd say go ahead and turn the fog of war off. Um, once again, the usual caution applies. Um, this is not even you know me necessarily playing at my very best or anything. There are definitely mistakes in this game, but there are lots of people who make mistakes in their games. And would like to see a game that, you know, is not dependent on super tight micro and things like that. Um, so, um, this is what you're going to see, and this is a kind of a variation of the uh, Dark Ranger strategy. Um, this is really just, I mean, for one, it's, uh, I think it is actually pretty decent against the Paladin. Um, it's really just one of those variety strategies where if you feel like throwing something different at your human opponent, um, it's not necessarily, I'm not going to go claiming it's better than like your, your average Death Knight starter game, but um, hey, it's fun. You know, it's a strategy game. And, and sometimes the surprise element makes it um, a little bit less work to win because your opponent is not going to be necessarily as practiced at beating. In fact, I get a lot of uh, wins on this just off the Tier 2 push. So um, basically, it's going to be replacing the Panda second with a Naga. This is something that Remind suggested to me, um, and of course, and like everyone else that I ever mentioned it to it, I thought it was completely retarded when I heard it. Um, just because, I don't know, the Naga's like weak and just, yeah. But it's one of those things where, like, after I tried it, I was like, wow, that's actually a pretty powerful push that you can get um, pretty early on and, and really screw a lot of human players over with it. Um, and anyway, this guy's going to be mass towering, and, and a lot of people, you know, crops up on the forums pretty frequently, like, how do I deal with mass towers? And I'll be talking about some of the ways that you can deal with mass towers. So, uh, two-minute mark. Hopefully you guys have got it ready to go there, um, and I'm going to get this rolling, so it's uh, 3, 2, 1, unpause. Um, this version that I'm doing here, I'm actually going to creep with the Dark Ranger, it's just something that I was kind of trying out, um, particularly after I played a game with Joseki, and he showed me how, with the Paladin, he could just completely ignore my Dark Ranger harass and creep up to level 3 very quickly, resulting in something that was not very fun for me and, res and ended with me losing pretty quickly. So I've been kind of trying out just bringing the Dark Ranger back to the base and, and getting uh, a rod and just creeping like normal. Um, uh, basically, it's it's just, you know, the Alter Crypt build, things like that. Uh, my opponent went for Archmage. It's really nothing new uh, in that regard. So... Um, by the way, this is not, you know, necessarily the most densely packed with action game. Like I said, it is it is a mass towering game. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take this time to give a few, like, final shout-outs. Uh, for one thing, I want to give a shout-out to this... There's this, like, this real newbie kid who plays as Love You or something like that, and he's in Clan RE. I don't know what that clan, it must be like a new clan or something, because I've never heard of them. I've certainly never been in it for a couple weeks or anything like that. Um, so anyway, yeah, he keeps like wanting me to shout out his clan, so here's a shout out to Clan Reborn, Rebirth, something like that. Um, check them out, they're on, they're on Azeroth. Um, let's see, I... I want to give a general shout out to all my fellow staff members as well as kind of an apology that um in general i've i've not been uh never really gotten the chance to be the most 
communicative or social staff member. Like I'm, I never have time to show up for like staff gaming nights or things like that, which, which kind of disappoints me because I really like playing the game with people I know. I just, it's one of those things where my gaming schedule is, is very irregular. So I, I just, I can never really be relied on to show up for anything. This is one of the reasons somebody asked me, you know, why I'm not in a clan. It's like, I can never show up.